Section 11.4 is on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. First, let's take a minute and go back and recall how to multiply and divide fractions, because rational expressions are basically just fractions. So if we are going to multiply a over b times c over d, remember we just multiply across the top, a times c, and then multiply across the bottom, b times d. And remember, b cannot equal 0 and d cannot equal 0 because that would make my denominator 0. Here's an example using real numbers. 3 sevenths times 5, or 2 fifths. Multiply across the top to get a 6. Across the bottom to get a 35. So the answer is 6 over 35. Now dividing fractions, a over b divided by c over d. Remember the rule that you multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Keep the first fraction the, cha the same, change the division to a multiplication, and flip your second fraction, and then just multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. And because in our original problem, b and d were in the denominators, b and d cannot equal 0. And then after we uh, flipped and got the reciprocal of the second fraction, c ended up in the denominator, so c cannot equal 0. Here's an example with real numbers. 3 sevenths divided by 2 fifths is equal to 3 sevenths times 5 over 2. Multiply across the top for 15 and across the bottom for 14. Now a couple, so these same rules apply when you're multiplying and dividing rational expressions. However, before we do any of the canceling or any of the simplifying, we need to factor everything first. So let's take a look at several examples here. So let's find each product or quotient. So for number one, I have 3x over 16x squared times 8x squared over 3. Since there's no addition or subtraction in this problem, it's all multiplication, you know, with the, the coefficients times the variables and division within the fractions, I can just go ahead and cancel. First thing that jumps out at me are these 3's can be canceled, and this 8, eight can become a 1 and my 16 a 2. And then I have an x squared on the bottom and an x squared on top that can cancel. And I think that's probably about it. So left on the top, I have an x. And on the bottom, I have a 2. And that's my simplified rational expression. For my second example here, um, I can't start canceling yet because I have a lot of pluses and minuses and I need to do some factoring. You might want to just kind of grab your pink pen and say, okay, cancel this x squared with that x squared and this 5 with that 5, but you can't do that. We have to factor this first. So let's take a look at this x squared plus, or minus 3x minus 4. That's a, uh, a polynomial, a trinomial, so we need to factor that into two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to a negative 3, so that's going to be an x minus 4 and an x plus 1. And my denominator of that expression, x plus 5, cannot be factored, so I'll leave that. In my second fraction, I have an x plus 5 on top. That can't be factored, so I'll leave that. And then on the bottom, I have an x squared minus 4x. And out of that, I can take a greatest common factor of x, so that'll cancel, factor into x times x minus 4. Now that everything's factored, now I can start doing some canceling. So I can cancel this x plus 5 with this x plus 5, this x minus 4 with that x minus 4, and I am left with, on top, an x plus 1, and on the bottom, just an x. And I cannot cancel this x on top and the x on the bottom because the x on top has 1 added to it. It's got to be completely multiplication in order to do any canceling. So there's my, my product. Here's a couple division problems. I have 5y squared over 4x divided by 5y over 8x cubed. First step is to write the first fraction as the, sa the same as it is, change my division to multiplication, and then flip my second fraction. Remember the rule is to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And this example has no addition or subtraction in it, so I can just start canceling. I'm going to cancel my 5s. This 4 can become a 1, and my 8 will become a 2. I have 1x on the bottom, 
and 3 on top, so that'll leave me with 2 x's on top, 1 y on the bottom, 2 y's on top, so that'll leave me with 1 y on top. And my final answer is going to be, what do I have left on top here? Just a 2 and an x y. and nothing left on the bottom. So that is my final answer. Okay, and for my last example here, um, again, I will have to um, change this to a multiplication and flip my second one. I'm also seeing that I have a trinomial here that needs to be factored and a binomial here that needs to be factored. So my first fraction is gonna be x minus five over two numbers that multiply to 18 and add to a negative 9 are going to be a negative 3 and a negative 6. And now flipping this, I'll have an x minus 6 on the top and my x squared minus 25 is a difference of squares so that I'll factor it into an x plus 5 and an x minus 5. And now that everything is factored, now I can do some canceling. My x minus 5's will cancel. My x minus 6's will cancel. And this is a little curious. It kind of looks like I have nothing left on top. But actually there is a 1 on top there. So make sure you put a 1 on top. And then on the bottom I have an x minus 3. And an x plus 5. And that is my quotient of those two rational expressions. So just to review and wrap up here, when we are multiplying and dividing rational expressions, we follow exactly the same rules that we do for multiplying and dividing fractions. The one thing we do need to remember to do is before we can cancel anything, we have to factor first. And if there's no addition or subtraction in the problem, if it's all just multiplication, it's pretty straightforward. Make sure you remember how to factor your trinomials some binomials, and as we saw down here, how to factor a difference of squares.